Hello, <coughs> happy bank holiday Monday. It's a lovely day. Uh, today, complicated seeing actually, is we're going to Stanley's Gate on a lovely sunny day like today with people. Well, I bet it doesn't look like that today because there's nobody about. But that is the view looking down Stanley's Gate from the top of Wigan. See, it is a lovely place, Wigan. It's part of what you say. Uh, we're going to sketch it out first. And we have to be quite quick today, so we've only got an hour, but I'm not being too fussy, hopefully. Um, because there's a lot of people in it, simplify, keep it to a few people here and there. There's some nice uh, silhouettes on this side, and there's some nice light people on this side with the shadows surrounding them. Uh, so we'll have to be careful here and paint around them. Uh, these three people, these two adults and a child, walking down the street. There's a little dog there, man, I'll bother with that. Uh, and we've got a lovely cerulean sky, and lovely warm colours, uh, burnt sienna, alizarine, ultramarine, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, I've said that, uh, and viridian green. Just bits of it, not a lot, and then if you need to use some goulash at the end, sorry, goulash at the end, you can do. <coughs> so I'll put the picture online, and hopefully you've all drawn it now, so I'll have catch up. Maybe you've not, we'll start by doing a very simple sketch. Um, if you look at the people's heads, you're actually looking down hill. So some of the people at the bottom of the hill are lower than the people at the top of the hill. You might think that's a stupid statement, but it does make a big difference when you're looking down hill because if it was level ground, all the heads would be on the same level. So if you look down the road, you've got people's heads are lower than these people here. These in the foreground are very, very similar. You could draw a line all the way across from the to across the picture where the heads are. And that line is going to be just below halfway. So because it's the same format, I'm just going to draw a line just below halfway. We can use a pencil. You can leave it kind of loose or you can add a pen later. And the first thing I'm going to put in is the two people in the foreground because I need to them to make this kind of lovely depth. And when we draw people, uh, we put the heads actually here. And if you look at the feet, they're about there. So they're quite big in the foreground. Okay, so he's got a hold on and he's walking down. We usually do kind of a character shape. Um, don't try and draw legs, we just draw the shapes between the legs that actually create a shadow on the floor like that later and the lady at the side of him the other side of him same principle we'll give her a skirt so she's just slightly the other side she's a little bit lower so i put her heads on that line more or less she's carrying something and then we get the carrot shape and a skirt okay like that so very very simple and we know that's a child of a very small person because he's a lot smaller, or she is, than the people who are with him, yeah? But he has a nice shadow, I think it's a little lad. So it's just a shape, and they're right in the centre, so, and we've got some lovely shadows coming in from the right, which is the, uh, from the building. <coughs> and then if I go straight across the picture, okay, I've got a couple of people outside the, uh, the uh, bank, um, and if you look at their legs, they're quite high up, they're on a par with about you know, the bottom of their coats actually. So they're smaller. So you do draw, you might not be able to see this much. There's a lady walking across the road here and she's going that direction. Like that. And again, she's smaller. There's people down the street which are just carrots with heads. They're all more or less on that line or just below it now, like I said, because you're going very small in the distance. And um, we can pick a few up here that are kind of silhouetted against the dirt background. Again, the legs are all on the same kind of level in that area. Uh, there's two people there, which we can highlight. People down the street. Uh, there's a telephone box here, actually. There's someone in. You don't have to do it, but it's entitled to. And then another couple of people walking down on this side of the street. Uh, Already you kind of create a lovely depth, yeah? 
uh, where the people are, that's where the buildings are going to finish. They actually finish behind his shoulder down there. So if I draw a line from there to about here, about just not halfway, uh, not about a third of the way. So if I draw a line like that, that is going to be the pavement. And then I've got the buildings, and then from his head, we've got this the left hand side of the street, and then over here. We've got the right hand side of the street. So we've got a bit of, of a shape. If we take that angle from there, coming from this bank all the way down to about, again, a third down the picture really. Uh -huh. uh, we will use a pen because we can move about the, uh, the uh, highlights. We take the street, uh, the buildings just past uh, the people because we don't want them on the same level as the horizon, they go past the horizon down to here. So the street is lower than the horizon line. But like I said, because it's going downhill, you're actually looking above people's heads. The buildings on the right hand side of the street have similar height. Uh, you get here and there, you get a roof sticking out. Then you get this shape, and then we get this um, lovely angle here, like that of the building there, which is Devon's, I think. Uh, and there's another building uh, just casting this shadow onto there, which is in shadow, sorry. And then this one just cuts down from here all the way down the street. Someone's going out, yeah. Um, no grandson today, so a little bit quieter. <laughs> but he's all right, really. As angle, we've got buildings, we've got windows. Now, when we start to see windows, um, we've got a little bit here. You can do a, a kind of inverted L shape like that. Uh, nothing too fussy. We've got the bank, we've got the optician, which is on the right hand side, which is quite high up if you look. So it's above, the, the signage is above the, um, the halfway point, which is about there. And in the distance down here, we've got some buildings, but we've got Hay Hall at the back there. You can see the trees going into Hay Hall. And then down here, lots of different stuff. But you can't see anything. Uh, we've got a few um, canopies coming out from the shop windows. We've got some windows. You've got some doors here, uh, windows. Sorry. And then as we get down to this, uh, the uh, opticians here, which is about there, like that. Stand, stand sticking out. And then here we've got another sign and everything's going. In fact, that's on the halfway point. So if you look at it, you could draw a line all the way across the street like that. And they would all be on the same level because you're going downhill. Okay, so that is the bottom of the shop. So on this side, we've got the sign for the bank. I've got a lovely archway. As you get nearer to you, then you want to kind of create these... Uh, more details so the windows are more detailed like that. and this edge of this building you know it's a bit more detailed it's coming out like that. some other buildings here actually in Wigan nice old ones um, the angle or the peak on that is going it's going that way first because you need to measure this kind of angle going down the street and then that's going the same direction this is the apex on the roof Slightly lower on that side than it is on this side. I always remember that. Plus you can see underneath the roof. Then you get the angle of this building. Now, I've got this kind of Tudor style. But uh, I'm not trying to put all that in. We can put them in later. We'll just get down to where the straight line is. And then just below that, we'll go in slightly upwards. Because that's the top of the shop. The shop uh, entrance to the shop line. Okay. So you can do that or go that way. Uh, there's a street lamp there with a with a, a banner on it as well. That's the street lamp. And then you've got the banner coming out. It's things like that cover quite a bit, the space. You've got another apex here going in that direction. Again, going away from you. It's a slightly higher building. They're not, none of them are all kind of, uh, on the same level. Um, that's what the internet's okay today, by the way. Uh, Welcome to Martin, if you're watching, I've just got a text from him to say he's signed up, so hope to see you soon, have a go. You don't have to do this, 
in one go we just kind of keep it a simple shit uh, and that's the majority now here we've got windows uh, lots of things going on so if I use a pen I've got another lamp down the bottom of the street again the lamps will be going to the same horizon line but if I use my pen if I'm happy with my perspective looking down that street I'm keeping it really simple uh, I'll just put this shadow in because that is really important <laughs> there as it comes that way so that's going up slightly because you've got the top of the roofs are going down to another line on the on the, on the horizon at the other side of the buildings the bottom of the building so that's going away from you okay a lot of people get it wrong but then just to try and think that anything above your head is going to go down either to the left or the right and anything below you your head is going to go up okay so we get these apexes in and they more or less get the roofs in and that's it just add a load of windows in there keep the angles for the buildings like that uh, apex bottom of the street lamp street lamp um, and the, the banners on the lamps you've got one there you've got one on this uh, building pick them up and then I'll just do a few people so here we've got this Tudor thing and then um, we've got the top of the shop here which is going slightly upwards so as we're going that way and then we've got the doorway to the bank uh, we've got the bank sign here um, windows again inverted L's quite simple because you've got a lovely shadow and then they've got that parapet place thing and there's a bit of ornate stuff there uh, nothing too fussy and then these windows which are kind of here on that shop and same over there as a window there as well so all these are just Tudor style things um, so as the shop goes in you get the floor you get the people uh, walking pavement the lady walking across the street which is kind of there that direction going off in that direction uh draw the shadows as well you know and you know, hank marvin and all them um a lady here there's one there just walking to do this guy with his hood um so once you get him in the right position he's got his hands in his pocket so he got the the disappear so that's good and then we just do the bottom of his coat and the shape of his leg uh disappearing and then the angle of the other leg so that's going away from you and that's where it hits the floor and this one stays on the pavement on the, uh, the walkway in the middle of the street because it's all pedestrian now isn't it? and then the other the girl with him not too much of a distance ahead yeah. uh, again hood it she's got a hand out holding the child uh, a mat she's wearing the coat and then she's a skirt same thing, you've got a leg, keep a leg underneath her so she doesn't fall over and the other leg is just off in that direction. So we've got a little shadows and then a little boy um, just here. Link the shadows together, they're quite interesting, they give you direction of sunlight uh, and that's what we need on a lovely sunny day. Little short legs, something like that. Uh, tell everyone about Telegraph Park. Uh, telephone box sorry, on the right hand side, we'll keep, it, keep anything down here nice and loose you can see a few rooftops and then as you're coming down this side of the street um, we've got lots of higgly piggly shapes and whatever it goes a little bit darker there because it's shadow these are the people who I just need to put silhouettes or put lighter tone around because um, they're in the shadows as is the top of the telephone box and things like that um, and this is the top of this uh, the zone eight thing there and then uh, the roof on that building uh, you're looking up at it you can't see the other side that's going away from you slightly like that and then this building you've got uh, a couple of windows here like that. Uh, something here and then you've got the sign on the uh, on the front of the shop which is an optician like I said uh, and these are straight lines these are inverted L's these are straight lines and inverted L's just make them up you yeah, don't realize them they look like windows and then we got a red sign there and next to the green so we can move it over and then we got the, the sign on the front of uh, Debenhams and whatever going down the street 
You can rub your pencil out if you wanted, or you can leave it in. It doesn't really matter. What you get in as well is some lovely sunlight reflecting into the shop windows. So this person here who's walking, and again, there's somebody next to him, we get some really nice, strong uh, shadows, which are part of the shadows that are leading us across the street. Like this. So the little, little guy here is going to get covered by the shadow, so he's holding his mum's hand. Uh, uh, and it, uh, when I paint his coat, then you paint the shadow around it. Don't have to give him the same colour of coat. Yeah? If you like to just shade things in, that helps you quite a bit. Uh, and then you got things like that, which are window shapes. Nothing too fussy, yeah? The side of that building, we need to know where it is, because that's coming up to here, yeah? Don't worry about missing some of this flat tape, or anything like that. It's just your interpretation of the scene, all right? Again, this shadow comes up to here, covers the feet, more or less. We've got reflected lights in there coming from windows. And then we've got some kind of tree here. Uh, we've got the bank again, which is a lovely arch uh, windows, which are going away from it. Okay, we all drawn it. How long do you need? Um, if you're not drawing it, take your time, just do it in your own time. There's no rush. Uh, there is for me, not for you. I'm just in a rush anyway, it's not you being fussy. Okay, quite interesting shapes. Oh, you can see it all that. Uh, yeah. Pat's here, she just said. Uh, <laughs> Hello, Pat. Can't read everybody, so if I miss, if I miss everybody else, I'll go away. And there you go, you've got lots of blobs, lots of things down the street. There's like, uh, there is a tree there, but I'm not gonna, I might not see that, we don't know. I um, just want to use these shapes uh, to give me these signs. And that is actually like that, tell it to you, but it doesn't mean that. Okay, um, and the window is here, so it's quite dark down there. So the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, what I will do though, is rub out my highlights, uh, rub out my lines where I don't need them, because I actually don't want them showing in the sky. I mean, you could have, it doesn't really matter that much if you've got, uh, if you've got them showing. Um, I quite like having a line in the picture, you know, in a drawing where you can see the drawing underneath because it shows you the, the looseness of it as well. But sometimes it's better just to get rid of any straight lines, like the horizon line, for instance. Uh, so you've nothing uh, uh, when it dries because it's going to dry a lot later. So you can get rid of uh, these lines you need, you use to um, to uh, position things, shops and things and windows. Okay, uh, um, not too much, worry too much about the people. Alright, so it's a picture of warms and cools, again, using the same colours. Red sienna, cadmium yellow, yeah, I've got a bit of yellow. Uh, <coughs> Ultramarine blue, uh, alizarine crimson, viridian green, we got some in the shop, and um, cerulean blue for the sky. But um, if you start looking at the warmer colours, everything on this side is quite warm, even the people, and you know, even if they're wearing coats like this, it's darker than the background, so it doesn't really matter if you go over or anything, you go put the flags in and things like that at this stage. It's just the warms or the alizarines and the the, red, uh, the siennas in the buildings, especially over this side. And we can add a few cooler colours just for the whites on that, um, on the Tudor. Because you've got these like Tudor markings, aren't you, like that. So you can add a blue to this kind of building. And then uh, when you paint the darts, the, the Tudor woodwork and whatever it will stand out as uh, in, sh in a bit of shadow because it is a bit of shadow but the first thing i'm going to do is put all this warm on and what i want to do is create this depth so we can add as you go down the road we're going to have people or the floor is going to be a lot lighter and as i'm coming up the road it's going a little bit darker so we can use uh, burnt sienna quite a lot of it uh, especially on the bank here because that's quite a, a, a lovely sienna -y color uh, which goes all the way down to the street as well. And um, we've got a few more warm colours down there. 
there. I'm just going to blob those in. If you get things down here uh, in the bottom of the road, just keep them a little bit lighter, nothing too fussy. Uh, we've also got a few uh, kind of purplish tones. You can put these in because you can leave them as just marks and shapes. So when you paint around them with the sky, they stay in the background because you don't want them to be too too um, light. Um, I'm going to use some warm colour here uh, with a bit of a lizarine in it. So that's sienna and lizarine. Uh -huh. um, we can bring that into that building. These are going purple actually. So we can add some warms because as you look at the shots, we're getting sh reflections in the windows. And also these people are quite warm as well. So we can add the warms. Uh, there's a bit of a roof there catching the light. Uh, they've got some blue, which I forgot to put in actually. Get your big brush. Uh, so we're just using a bit of that kind of blue uh, on this roof as well. And drag it into wet yeah? uh, water. And same on that one, there's a bit of... But we let them kind of run together first. As you get into the shops, they're going very dark. We want the, the create, to create this nice um, kind of lovely golden uh, colour where the sunlight's catching things. Uh, don't, you don't need to paint around people. And the floor's going to be nice and warm. Uh, so in the distance we've got a lot of warmth. Uh, put it on, take it off. And then as we're going forward, I'm adding more sienna. Again, we need salt because if you put salt on, you're going to create this lovely depth. Uh, so we've got sienna there, and then we're going alizarina. Now you won't see this in the picture, but as it dries this, this is going to give you a lovely depth into the street. And then as we come forward, we're adding a little bit of blue, because that's going to bring the foreground towards you, can you see? So you create this nice depth. There's no shadows in there yet, I'm just creating a depth. And then I'm going to put some salt in there for uh, the pebbles and whatever you're on the street some texture okay and while that while that's going i can look at some of my people because i've got the guy little lad with his mum and he's got a lovely kind of yellowy shirt yellowy jacket i'm just adding a bit there and i've got people walking down the streets so as long as they're not in my um wet kind of area on the paper uh they should be okay we'll just add a bit of elizabeth blobs here and there for some of the markings and the way the uh, shops are going in the distance they're going a little bit lighter darker as they get towards you that's all um, and this side of the street's going to be quite dark the rooftops are a bit of a lizard and blue excuse me I've just stubbed it in a bit of a lizard and blue so you can put a few a bit of purple on some of these uh, apexes we can pair around these with the um, when we do the sky, so don't worry about that. Uh, and that's the shape of that roof there, which goes very dark underneath, but we add that later. Uh, I'm going to do the darks later. <coughs> that's the apexes. Uh, there's a few down there which are just la lines and shapes in the distance, because you see the shop fronts and they're just kind of little shapes. Okay. What we need to do is just add a few people with white clothes on, people with... Uh, red tops or blue tops yeah mix it up a bit even if they're not there just mix it up we'll give this guy a blue top uh this guy's got some jeans anyway but it's a bit wet that um and then leave that at the moment and got uh, something coming out uh, coming out from the building a couple of signs here uh, inside the telephone box as well we've got this bluish cast painting around some of these people and i've got a lovely red or a lizardine kind of sign here. I've not painted the shadow on this bit, this side of the buildings yet because I just want that to kind of run a little bit um, and then we can go darker as we get to the uh, shape of the um, shops. So this green, a bit of cerulean and green, I love the kind of uh, turquoise colour, uh, could go a lot lighter. Um, not doing any lettering, don't do any lettering. Uh, this is the sign and that's the sign there uh, and we can paint the dark shadows around that. Again we've got some blue on this side which is the, the windows here which are in shadow. So just drag it down a little bit 
and they'll compare around these in a bit. We've got some reflections in the sky, uh, so there's some windows here, and they're getting reflections. So they got the blue kind of reflections from the sky, <coughs> and then we'll do a bit more kind of purples. I'm going to come into it more now, so we can get cerulean, ultramarine blue, and alizarine crimson to give us a lovely purple colour. So this is like the shadow on the roof, for instance, or the guttering, or underneath where the shops are, or a bit underneath the, the apex and things like that, yeah? Um, don't try and just do every pane of glass, it's just impossible. So we just do a couple of shapes, and um, we can do things like that later, and go darker with them. So I'm just picking up shapes first, going darker around the shops. While that's drying, I'm going to mix some uh, cerulean blue with a bit of ultramarine and we can paint the sky around everything else. Now keep away from the rooftops, yeah, they're not dry and the best way of doing it is just to wet it, uh, paint around the roofs, don't have it too runny, paint around the rooftops because everywhere, anywhere you put the water that's where the sky is going to run. You can have it lighter at the bottom Take the excess moisture off. Have it lighter at the bottom, I'll just leave it kind of rough. So as you go down to the horizon, uh, it goes a little bit lighter. So then I'm mixing, uh, again, cerulean and a bit of ultramarine. Mix them together. I need a lot of water, quite a bit of water actually, still. Like that. And we can put it on, just like that, and let it run. Like I said, it will run where, wherever you put the water. You just have to be careful that you don't let it run all over the buildings. Uh, this is my lovely blue sky. If that's wet, when that's wet, while that's wet, I should say, you can still go into it. Once it's dry, if you start going into it, you're going to make a a loose kind of, you've got to take the paint off and you'll have lines. As you're coming down here you can make clouds, you can just kind of leave these distant clouds, you can see. Uh, you don't have to follow everything on your picture. You, know? you can add seagulls in there, and just take a blob off here and there. Uh, throwing salt on it, it's quite interesting. And you can leave the sky disappearing. Uh, the salt here now is giving a bit of uh, texture on the floor as it's leading you into the street. All right, and then I can use my kind of middle sized brush a bit more because I want to paint the purples in these uh, in these buildings. So as I go here, just be careful with this guy, and I go and I start to work downwards from the top because I want to get reflections in the window. But I also, also want to get uh, shadows. Now, I cannot count every window and I cannot count everything that's going on. If you add other colours to that while you're painting, because you can actually add, like, uh, down the bottom of the street, because it's a little bit warmer, so we could add more uh, a kind of blue, blue and burnt sienna make uh, uh, a burnt umber, so it's quite nice for doing shadowy bits like that. Uh, as you're getting down the street, and then we're getting more kind of shapes down the around things. So again, it's a bit too big this bush for a bit of detail down there. Take it uh, uh, where the roof is there, it's got a, a light, just catching that little bit of roof. Uh, little things sometimes really help. So against your sky, we want a, a, a really nice dark to bring out the lights in the sky okay and that on that side of the street uh, is a lot of kind of different taller values reflective lights and shadows so we can use the purple quite a bit uh, mix it up a bit like I said so here we've got this kind of cerulean blue uh, textures and then it goes a little bit lighter as it comes down because you get reflections from the floor so you can start you start to get kind of things like here like I said, where you get uh, reflections in the window. And if you look in the window, you've got kind of green uh, all around there, actually. But uh, it's 
it's coming from somewhere, so it's reflecting from somewhere. Um, and this side of the street, again, a bit more purple with the, the uh, shops are. Uh, I just have to turn the heat, heat it up. I've got a little fire on. I need to turn it off, it's roasting. It's a lovely day, but a bit breezy. But it's like this in Wigan today, that's it. <laughs> and then, um, the sky's okay. I'll leave that for now. Add all the colours while it's damp, if you can. So you get that nicer blend. Again, like I said, you can got the inverted L's here. Very simple shapes. Takes you down to the side of this building. And we start adding a few of the, the darker tones. So there's a bit of green. Uh, alizarine and green and blue you know all these kind of shadowy bits um, a bit more alizarine don't keep adding lots of colours together because you just make a muddy mess uh, they are transparent colours these so you should be able to get one or two colours together to create a kind of shadow so that, again we've got the light catching those windows so if I drag that down you need to follow uh, the angle of the buildings because they're going away from you like that so you know just the light on a few of the, uh, the shadows uh, the windows and then they all blend into kind of one so when that dries I can uh, add some darker tone and then more blue with this purple just to give me this really nice kind of shape and looking down against towards the phone box underneath the roof and you start to bring out some of these shapes. Now I know I've got, I've left a lot to do on this one, so but I'm really, really trying not to be very fussy. Okay, uh, so I want it to be quite loose. We were still in the middle of the street. Um, I would get knocked down, but uh, I wouldn't because possessing that. So these are the shapes on this building. So I've got this nice, uh, these lovely kind of uh, ornate areas where you've got, you know, etchings and what have you which is very difficult to do all that but I can do a bit of sienna a bit uh, again to scratch out and make it a little bit darker in places just like that because I've got my light sienna so it's a bit of sienna mixed with a bit of blue and then I can kind of do the shadows of my windows uh, working my way down like that. Uh, coming down to our sign which is about here <coughs> going a little bit darker if you put something on that's you know just dampen it and then add darks to it and they just run down the picture so it actually does the work for you and it's kind of planning it so you know you're getting all these shapes in the right place uh, I'm concentrating more on these doors and areas on the building on the left as well because this is where we're getting most of the detail on this shop, on this bank, where these people are. Yeah? And they're kind of, they've got warm heads, but they've got uh, uh, different cl clothes on, so it's like uh, a bit of alizarine as well. You can use, uh, I don't use a lot of cadmium red, but uh, I have some. But you can use it for people, or put it on people's heads, or put it on their shops and what have you. The dark areas, yeah. Um, a bit more blues. Uh, looking at the side of this, because I've got a car, it's like a triangle shape, right? And then that goes into the shop there, which is, as it comes to the bottom, we've got some people's shadows here. As it gets to the bottom of the shops, we're going darker. Uh, um, the people who are stood outside, the trousers and that are uh, uh, darker. Um, the shop you know so here I've got the shape of the windows and the window ledges uh, shadows uh, dark areas from here so I can start adding a bit of kind of detail to make it stand out because they're coming forward okay and then the rest of, if I concentrate on uh, the detail near to me um, it's a, I can paint a lot quicker and then when I get to the bottom of the street, um, there's just a load of blobs, so it's dead easy then, because I can just put the blobs in. So the top of that roof, uh, I've got some kind of 
nice warm cook tone um, I'm not doing the tiles because you can see the tiles <coughs> again use a bit of blue transparent blue so you're just getting uh, the shadows from things rather than uh, painting the whole thing like that and you end up getting the shape of these buildings yeah uh, coming down into the shop again uh, we've got some lovely reflections in the windows like that clothes blobs here little blobs here little blobs there you can use goulash at the end to give these blobs um i've got a green sign yeah something around that lady's head everything uh next to this a banner and then as i go down the street a little bit thicker paint looking at the tops of these uh roofs again under there it's quite dark <coughs> and i've got the angle then uh, uh, and the marks for here uh, uh. squint take glasses off um, the street lamp probably going to use a rigger brush not doing it with this because it's too thin uh, it's too fat actually so I'm going to use a rigger brush for my street lamp that's the top of that roof and that's the side and underneath so uh, you can only see the underside of the roof as it hangs over and then here we can have a few uh, shapes and shadows like that to give me a depth okay that's all right and going over this side now we can get a little bit darker again where reflections are or reflected lights i should say in the bottom of the street so while it's drying around me people and my little lad's jacket's gone a bit too uh a bit too light so i'm going to make that kind of a mustardy colour a bit cleaner than that actually uh, but sienna um it's just lighter it's just a little bit darker than the floor uh she's got something over her shoulder which is similar color uh, um, again she's got a red something red there uh he's got a red face must be a bit sunburned and uh, somebody in red lady in red down there uh somebody down here who's walking as well who's catching the light uh this lady in white we need to bring her out so we paint around her yeah so it's keep purples and blues uh alizarines uh these shadows that are coming from the front of the shops uh -huh. direction of light so this is mid-tone as well and then um, we can put some of these uh, shapes in when you get to this stage you kind of slightly uh, oops just got on my banner you, you, you kind of slightly uh, sketching really with your brush so it's you know, so you get down to the people on the street uh she's got dirt trousers but she's got a light top on uh, and as you get up to this fella and his hair uh, he's got a bit of hair there on the top of his jacket um, and people here who's got a little she's quite dark he's got a bit of blue top on uh, purple kind of top i'll give it a blue and then she's coming down she's got a, a mac and then her one leg's going backwards and the other one's going forwards that's how you walk and then you've got a shadow on the floor like uh, that from both legs actually and the body yeah to give a direction uh, that's the pavement uh, that's uh, the dog the dog <laughs> the dog's just a shirt like that and a blob with a shadow I don't know who's got that dog actually on the lead. One of these people there. All right. Uh, <coughs> don't do dogs really. Um, the light then coming off this building. Again, keep it sunlight and the angles going down your street. Uh, use the side of your bush. Stop it being there. Uh, you can't do anything fussy when you're using the side of your brush because you've not got the power to do that really. You've got a bit of sienna, <coughs> like I said, where there is a tree down here. Uh -huh. I can just take a bit of the light off because we don't. We just want to hint at it, and then we'll have a bit more kind of. Uh, we've got some windows in these uh, in these apexes at the side and uh, the windows going away from you uh, and that's going up there so the lady with the dark hair again we can pick her out <laughs> take 
take his uh, get the back of his jacket and his hood and put the same it's actually a similar color uh, so you've got this lovely kind of alizarini which goes into blue so we can take it off and put it on again so it's like uh, ultramarine blue and alizarine which is purple and as you drop that in you get these you should get these lovely purplish tones actually making the shape of a, a jacket a leather jacket that's coming down to a skirt which is a similar tone it's like bluey grey so we can just use that to be the shape of the skirt in one direction uh, the guy with the trousers is the guy with the trousers the blue trousers again it's not just ultramarine it's kind of uh, cerulean and ultramarine mixed together so I want that leg going away and this one coming towards you you can take the light off the top of him with his bummies uh, and then you get the shape of the leg coming down like that so it's just giving him a a kind of walk really and then you can go around just to bring out the shadowy bits yeah the thing is when you're in silhouette uh, when you're in yeah silhouette against the background you have to actually kind of paint the shape you're looking at okay so we can use the shape of him and it's slightly darker in his in his legs there. all right um again the lady's hair is quite dark give her a ponytail like that these are all still mid-tones yeah i've not gone too dark yet because my dart is going to build, bring it together later. A few shadows on the street. A um, few more people and doors and windows and shop signs. Things like that. Down the street. As you get down to the pavement, it's going to be quite dark. Uh, there's lovely cerulean's here. It's got over his face. Oh no. Uh, cerulean shapes. My darkest dark is going to be red and green, seldom seen. For instance, if I put the darks in the shops here now, uh, it's kind of the inverted windows. Uh, it's quite dark, so if we just drag them down, you get the shapes of the windows. Like and the power pit coming out from there is a dark against the sky it's also dark shadow against that rooftop with something stuck to it and then this one's coming that way dry brush as well can you see how you're making these uh, rough texture marks because of the dry brush strokes uh, so that's green it's got green in it um, <clears throat> again windows we can block the whole thing in actually and just use a few uh, few marks as rough texture marks shadows on the buildings drag it take it off put it on take it off <coughs> sienna a bit more sienna sienna's your warmer part so we've got some kind of warmer colour on this roof and it goes that way and um, the guy with the coat I need to mix this um, Kind of slightly grey brown uh, off because it's um, so if we put the shape of his coat in like that first and then um, add some shadowy bits and then take off some of that you should end up with a similar kind of thing so we take up the light on his shoulder and the light coming down his back like that you can see where the light's just catching the bottom of his coat and this arm. Um, you see? So you just get a shape like a jacket, really. That's all we after. Um, get more blue. As we, the thing I haven't done at the moment is step back to see if everybody's still watching. Yeah, and it's still taping. Time's getting on a bit now, so we're doing well so far. Two shadows, darks. Blob here, little blob there, underneath the markings for the street. So as you're coming down to the tops of people's heads at the bottom of the street, you're just getting these little lights and then you get in silhouettes like 
where people have nothing fussy. Yeah? Nothing too fussy, hopefully. <coughs> right, on the right hand side of the street, again, more lizarine and more blue for the shadows because I want to bring out the shape of the windows because you get this lovely shadow coming down the sides to reflections. <coughs> and as you get into this part of the uh, building, we've got a really strong dark there. Uh, we've got the dark again coming from this direction. So we've not got any sun, but you get a kind of reflective light. And the bottom of that building, this is a little bit darker, and uh, we can uh, pick that up later. And do the roof, which is always dark against the sky, and we'll add a little bit of yellow and sienna for. Um, what am I doing? Someone's just come in again. Oh, the yellow's right in here. It's kind of a red brick yeah, shape. Just like that. And then as we get to the top of the sky, top of the buildings, we're slightly darker still. So we've got these lovely shapes, especially here, leading me down to some of the windows, or the side of a building, or the shape of these little slats like that. Just add water. Yeah. Um, go that way, and that way, and that way. Keep it nice and wet, loose. <coughs> and here. So we've got the awning, got the name of it, can never remember what it's called. And the red sign and the shadows on this side of the street, which is just usually quite a bit blue on the shadow side of the street. And we're going to go darker and darker now. I got this lovely shadow on on the uh, pavement. If you look at the pavement, if you look at the road as well, you've got a nice. Uh, let me get some tissue. You've got a nice kind of changing tone, really, from where it starts to uh, change from the pavement. It's actually kind of a lizarine and a bit of blue, actually. It's a little bit purple again. So we look at this uh, from it coming from the guy's jacket, you see? His arm. And it goes like kind of just slightly darker. Uh, like something like that. So hardly too much, but we can take a bit off as well so it softens it. And then I'll put the shadows in. You're getting the same on the other side. You get a bit of blue and a bit of lizarine mixed together to create this shadowy, cooler tone on this side of the street. It's not the shadow, it's the I'm just a cooler, cooler tone to the street. Uh, I'm going to put the shadows in. Um, we're going to just sing. <coughs> like that. That's how we're doing. Not so bad really. Green and blue, green and red, sorry, very strong. Looking at the shadows here, underneath the shop windows now, inside the shops as well. Uh, we've got people walking past, like I said, who are, uh, and they're in, they're in the shadows, so, you know, we just have a shape that looks like a person, actually. So, it's a person shape, that's all we need. And the, the, the markings around uh, the shop, top of the shops, top of the shops, top of the pops, <coughs> which goes into the shadows around these people, actually. Nice and dark, a bit more blue. We use a lot of blue, as you may have guessed. So I want to keep these people kind of silhouetted a bit uh, as they're walking down the street. Yeah? That's where the shops are. And they will just melt into the shadows on the floor. Like that. So as you get to the floor, then you're just going to get this shadow. Uh, Okay, I'll keep it purple. I'll get a bigger brush. Sure, no, I'll get a small brush first because I want to go round things and then we'll go more purple. I'll go more uh, 
loose bigger. So I'm looking at this uh, telephone box uh, and the road and the darks in front of it. So this box is actually casting a bit of a shadow into the street. And then I've got some people here, the silhouettes as well. I need to do some more to this actually as well. Uh, where the windows at? On the top of the roof. Uh, underneath the hoarding. Drop dark in while it's damp. You get a better, better kind of blend. And then um, I'll use some blue to go into the street. So I've got the little lad's head. I've actually gone a bit too far over. You can always take it off before it dries. Scratch it as well. That gives you a, a light mark and then you can take it off before it dries. That's another thing. Or you can use goulash over the top. So I'll bear that one big shadow, which is just a touch of alizarine and blue. Like this, not too dark first. Okay, uh, past the guy's little guy's head, like that, and we can add texture to that by adding a bit more salt if you want. So we're painting around this fella. Hope it's dry. Bit around his head, uh, around his hand. Like that. It's a bit lighter there. But you, don't, you can just cover him up, it doesn't matter. He's got dark trousers on anyway. And then that goes into his shadow. So it's the same shadow, and he's got. He's got plimsolls on, something like that. And then I'll use the same blue for some darker bits, like around his hood. Uh, let's load his arm again. Underneath the jacket. The legs quite dark. So we've got uh, a leg and then the thigh, not the thigh, the calf coming out like that and going that way. <coughs> and then they're joining up to the shadows. Uh, <coughs> and the guy on the left. And again. And the shoulders, head, shoulders, and legs. Head, shoulders, and a bit of glazing. I'm wet. Stand back. It's quite uh, light at the moment, and I've got kind of ten minutes, 15 minutes. So now the shadows over here. Again the guy and the shop. Um, not the shop. Bank. What the darks? Red and green. You can mix blue with it as well. So we're getting really strong shadows. This is like, it's like drawing with your your brush actually. That's what I usually tell people. You're just drawing the dark areas in over the top. And you think it's quite dark but it's not, see. So if we add a few <coughs> shapes. Uh -huh. 
again I'm just concentrating on this uh, side of the street to give me my uh, strong highlights, strong shadows to bring out the warmth. So this is green and red like I said, add a bit of blue, get down to the shops. If you go down, can't wait to go to shops out there. Miss shopping, anyway. Around the lady here and the dog barking at somebody. He's got a shadow as well. Lady with the coat on. Paint round her, paint round anybody else who's down there. That's the shops. This is the only time you get right near the end of your bush where you're holding it, yeah? Just to give you straight lines and shadows. And tying it together. Hopefully. Top of the roofs, angle of buildings, always going in that direction. Yeah. Want some more lizarine down there. <coughs> So, got that lovely alizarine kind of banners down the street. And this is a lovely purple um, on this side. I know it's got writing on, but I'm not doing writing. And then uh, the shadow under that building. <coughs> so if you use red and green, you get nice darks. You can also make them cooler I can make them lighter so here against the sky these uh, roofs uh, these apexes is gonna stand out a little bit darker and then coming down to this top of his head's dark the back of his coat is already you kind of just sketching in what you've missed out so you're trying to leave Lots of warms and lights and highlights and then all you're doing is adding and don't forget shadows of people uh, going away from you. Like uh, I keep putting my finger on it's got the dark so that's dark. Should be dark on the leg. Just like that. And then the right hand side, again, we've got really strong shadows here. But it's a lot of blobs. <coughs> Going down the street. <coughs> Windows, doors. Bottom of the windows here and there. Tops of the buildings against the lights. I won't go outside now shopping. And the last building, Strong Shadow. You can always add contradictory to what Mr. Poxon would say, some goulash uh, if you've lost any of the light. Yeah, <coughs> can I just put it back in for instance I could put a strip of light just there where I've missed the light on the telephone box which is here uh -huh. in that direction. Um, so I could do a strip of a kind of shadow Show you what I mean before. We and then we're going in other directions as well, so we get different tones. It's like now in the street, and again, and a bit more blue, and a little green, and water. So these are glazes, we can glaze, uh, just to give us a bit more depth. Uh, just leave uh, some lights. Textures, you don't have to do the same tone. Yeah. Slap it off, slap it off, scratch it off if it's too light. Stand by.
Not really pigeons or anything. Yeah. Uh, there's a bit of a place there where things aren't working too well, so just have a look at that. Dry brush. <laughs> All right, and then a few dags here. I'm drying up, can you, can you tell? I've stopped talking, that means I'm either overdoing it or I'm drying up. You get your bigger bush, we just add a sweet lamp. So this one, so like that, and then just go down. Uh, this one as well, smaller, distant, right? um, pavement. Shadows. Also use some goulash. Just squirted a bit out actually. So here's some we got earlier. Which is dried up. So I'll just squirt a bit more. Bit of acrylic goulash. Uh, not acrylic goulash. You can get acrylic goulash, which is I don't know why, but uh, not brilliant. So like I said here, I can have a, a little strip of light that I've missed. And here, against the shadows, and we can take the light across in front of the post box that I've missed. Little things. Between feet, people. Top of this, people in the distance, anybody down the street. Keep it cool down there, you shouldn't have it too warm. Uh, lovely warms in the shop windows. Um, whatever. A few lines. Side of the roof again. Tiles. Uh, shape here. Excuse me. Front of the building. It's, it's quite purple in the background. You got this nice uh, kind of silhouette of the trees around the buildings uh, way in the distance. So we don't want that. And then you're just adding a few details to any of the figures that you want to kind of bring out more, which is like the guy with his hand in his pocket. Uh, don't know who he is. If you recognise yourself, let me know. It's not my picture. So don't sell it. Um, your shoulder. Blobs, marks. Blobs, highlights. How is it? I bet somebody told me then. Few minutes to <coughs> there is some shadows here. Might just put a few in. So where the pavement is, it goes wider, and then we get some shadows afar. There's actually a tree here or something. And so I say, oh, you spoil it, eh? Wait a minute. Take it off again. And the shadow of the guy on the street. <coughs> yeah. Okay, pigeons. Must have a few pigeons. Um, they always look like bats for some reason. Uh, a 
few blobs just kind of flying about. Big one, little one. Garden flying in formation. Uh, can have a few spots and flying off in the distance and then turn a couple of them into pigeons. Got some in here and others. Uh, loads of them. And the dog. Not really a dog. Shit like a dog. Go like that now. Anyway, I'm back. Shadows on the floor. I would actually make these a little bit darker. The thing is with shadows, they have a dark outline and they get reflected lights in the middle. So you'll find that uh, they're a little bit lighter in the middle because of reflection. Uh, and then, uh, just do shadows on the legs actually. Very dark. Oh, dark, dark. And dark. There's another red sign there. Always look for these uh, coloured things that tie your picture together. There'll be loads. You can make them up, like I said. That's where the streets are. Uh, shops up, so. Finish. It actually wants some sienna in it. Then you mix your goulash with So at least it's the same tone. Otherwise, it looks too strong. I have finished, honest. Um, the white of a coat, uh, not the white, the arm of a coat's quite dark. And Reflected lights make a big difference. Soft areas, dirt areas. They all fed up now. <coughs> I don't know how we do two hours in class. And hood. Overworked, underpaid. Bad idea, nice and loose. Um, would be good if you could stand there and do it, but uh, we can't go out. Take the tape off, nice white border, stand back. I mean, you can leave that to dry, which I haven't done. But well, you should leave it to dry and then finish off the uh, shadowy bits, ducks, whatever. Anyway, my interpretation of Wigan on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, a bit more warm. Glaze. That's a glaze. One glass. All right. Finished. <coughs> so I know it was a bit hard, difficult to do that, but uh, we like a challenge, you know. Perspective. Thank you very much. It's just gone. One. See you soon. Wednesday. I'm doing three. People who want three, and if you don't want two, if you want, if you don't want three. You can always miss one out or come back to it or whatever because I need to keep myself active so you do not have to do everyone. And plus they're online. You can see them all the time. Thank you very much. See you guys.
Bye.